Of all the new additions that have come to Game Maker Studio 2.3, there's one that I've been looking forward to more so than all the others, and that is the addition of lightweight objects, also known as structs. There is quite a lot of stuff to unpack when it comes to structs, and I will be making several videos on the subject, and the different things you might use them for, and the different ways you might use them. But to start out with, I will show a fairly simple example. So, what I have here is, um, is, is, I just, I just ran that, I don't know why I ran it again. This is a stripped down version of my video on chained accessors, uh, which is another addition that has been added to Game Maker Studio 2.3. I took out some of the stuff for the rays that I had at the bottom, since that's not really needed anymore uh, in this case. In essence, the way this is set up is that there is a a whole... There's a lawnmower, really... Why, why does everybody like to mow their lawn right when I sit down to record stuff? Um, I, have a, I have a big data structure, a structure of data structures also known as JSON. It looks like this, if you were to represent it as, as a tree, this is an inventory, uh, a potential inventory that you might use in a game. I can wait for the lawnmower. It hasn't really been too noticeable on past recordings, so I'll just do my best to ignore it. So this is a big data structure, and it contains a, a, uh, a list at the root, which contains, in turn, a uh, collection of lists, which are the, item, the different item categories. And each category list contains a DS map, which, uh, which has a key value pair for both the name of the item and the quantity of them, how many you have. And that's okay, honestly. That's not the biggest mess you can make with a big old JSON tree. But there are ways to make this neater. And the first thing that I'm going to do to illustrate the point of structs and or lightweight objects, I am going to try to call them structs instead of lightweight objects. They're officially called structs by Game Maker, by Yo-Yo Games. But for a long time before the uh, the update officially came out and became available, the community was calling them mostly lightweight objects, which is kind of what I'm used to. I'm going to try to I'm going to try to use the official terminology, but if you hear me say that, uh, that's what I'm referring to. They're the same thing. And why they're called that, I will get to in a minute. But first, how to create one. So you may have seen something called something uh, something along the lines of the new keyword. And I don't mean I don't mean a keyword that's been recently added, but literally new. The word is a keyword now. It's very confusing. Who's on first? Followed by a function name. And you may have seen something like this. This is also part of the struct mechanism. Um, I will be getting to that in a future video, but for now I want to make these as simple as possible. So these are two curly braces. This is a pair of curly braces, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to be using line spacing. I'm going to be I'm going to be spacing them out a little bit to make them easier to read, and I'm going to be typing a few things. If you've ever used JavaScript, if you've ever seen JavaScript object notation, this is going to look very familiar. But first, name followed by a colon, and I'll get to a, the colon in a minute, and I'm going to give it a name. All right, followed by a comma. Quantity, I think I, I think I made the quantity one earlier. Ow. I whacked my foot on the side of my desk. So this is, this is the bare bones form of a struct. Uh, as I said a minute ago, it is very similar to JavaScript object notation. Uh, it is followed by, it is a set of keys and values. The keys are what would be the, uh, the variable names if you were to think of structs as objects. The colon here, you can think of as the equal sign. There's not really, as far as I know, a technical reason why this has to be an equal sign and has to be a colon instead of an equal sign. This is just a, a decision on the part of the designers of the language. In JavaScript, as I keep going back to, uh, the colon is just a, that was just a design convention. I suppose they want to differentiate assignment inside one of these um, lightweight objects. There I go, inside one of these structs. JavaScript just calls them objects, that's my excuse. Anyway, they want a way to differentiate something inside one of these uh, blobs of data. I'm just going to call them blobs of data now. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. They just want to differentiate this from regular uh, programming, in which you would use an equal sign. Lawnmower. I think that's a uh, I think that's a, a weed whacker or a leaf blower or something rather than a lawnmower. I can't see who exactly is doing that outside my window right now. And then likewise, at the end, instead of a semicolon, like you're probably used to using at the end of lines, you would use a comma to, uh, to denote the end of a key value pair. So I'm going to do this for all of these items that I've defined. So let's see, name is going to be big sword, 
quantity is, is going to be three. I suppose it's worth mentioning um, if you were using JavaScript object notation, the keys would also be uh, in surrounded by quotation marks. They would also be strings. That's Gmail has opted not to do that. You don't need to use um. You don't need to use strings, as the uh, the variable names, the key names. Hey. Let's see. I'm just going to copy and paste this several times because it's a. Uh, A little bit faster. I have 50 slices of pizza. That should be enough to get me to like the beginning of the next town in the game. What was this? I think this was the bacon one. Bacon. And this was candy, which we are uh, which which we are desperately running out of. Okay. So all of the DS maps containing the um. The, the item stack information have been converted to lightweight objects. Ah, structs. And now I'm going to go over over to the um, over to the draw side of the inventory. I'm going to run the game. This is not going to work. I don't really think anybody's expecting this to work. Um, if you're curious about the exact kind of error, the exact kind of way that it's not going to work, uh, DS map find value argument one and able to convert to an integer because this is no longer a uh, this is no longer a number pointing to the index of a data structure. Structs are a new data type. So simply, instead of using um, instead of using the DS map accessor notation for name and quantity, I'm just going to use the dot operator, as if these were an item and uh, an, an instance, and say name and quantity. And here we are where we started. You can see we are drawing the names of the uh, we are drawing the names of the the items in the inventory, followed by the quantity that we have. If I were to uh, if I were to change some of these values, let's say that we've gone and properly stocked up on candy. You can see that the value is updated, and you can extend this as far as you want. If you wanted to, for example, make instead of the um, let's see, let's say you want to make the item pockets, the categories, lightweight objects, instead of instead of lists themselves. You can take this a step farther. Uh, so we can say, uh, just just for the sake of it, we might as well give the, the categories a name. And you can, actually I'll call it contents. That does not take a semicolon. I just told myself that, I've already forgotten. You don't need to put semicolons after the end of everything. Uh, GML is, in general, is very flexible when it comes to semicolons, except for in a few specific oddity places. Um, but it's uh, it's generally it's generally accepted as correct to put semicolons at the end of statements like this. Anyway, we have now added uh, we ha we have now we have now done this. So let me instead of adding a bunch of item stacks to the struct itself, which doesn't make sense and would crash the game, we now have to add it to the uh, the contents list inside that struct. And we'll do the same thing for food. Let me just copy this real quick. This is going to be food. And it's, uh, it's also going to have its contents out of there. Let's see, item pocket food dot contents. Okay, that looks good to me. All right, so let me save that. I'm going to run back over here. Uh, item pocket is now instead of a uh, instead of itself a list. It is now a struct containing some variables, one of which happens to be a list. And I'm just going to update what variables we are using here. Run the game. This is going to do the same thing as before. That's a new error message I haven't seen before. What's going wrong? Is it like, is it really just taking issue with this right after I made a video on how chained accessors work? Uh, right before I sat down to record this video, there was an update to GameMaker, and I don't know if things have changed. 
I'm going to call that item stack. Let's see if that fixes things. All right, there we go. So the item pockets are now uh, the item pockets are now their own their own structs instead of just simple lists. If you wanted to, you could say, for example, draw the name of the uh, draw the name of the pocket. I'm going to do that here. Item pocket name, and we don't need any of that after it. And let's just move this down a line. What would be the next multiple of 32 to 24? So we can take advantage of um, of the different the different uh, variables inside each of these structs. As you see, it now draws the name of the category. And if you want to, you can extend that. If I were to add another category, let's imagine uh, what would what would something else you carry around in in an RPG be? Hats, obviously. Well, let's add an, let's add a, a a category for hats. So, if you'll give me a minute, okay. So I've defined some hats. Let's go and add them to add them add them to the list. We have some fine taste in hats in this game. Let's move this over a little bit so there's more space. Uh, that should be an underscore. So we've got the uh, we've got we've got all the usual hats plus the pirate hat plus the peak of fashion, the bucket hat. If you've never seen one of those, go look them up. They're great. So we're gonna run the game now, and this is simply going to add another category, and it's not going to add it to the actual right to the to the correct pocket because I forgot to update that. Okay. There's always got to be something when I run things for the first time. So we've added another hat category. Um, I think I've driven the point home, in, home far enough. I don't think I need to, um, I don't think I really need to demonstrate anything else. The real reason that I added the hat category is more because I just, I just want to make a fashion statement or something when it comes to hats than I, than I wanted to show off any new kind of GML code. That's the basis of lightweight objects. Hey. Like I said, there are... Plenty of other things you can do with these. You can use constructors, which is what the new keyword is for. You can use methods. You can use methods, which are essentially functions that belong to the lightweight objects hey. instead of just being available globally. There's inheritance. You can do some fun things with inheritance. It's good stuff. Um, it's, it makes organizing game data a lot easier. I'll also go into some, I'll probably go into specific examples of things that you can use uh, structs for. I called them lightweight objects again, didn't I? in the future. Although, um, since I've shown off item stacks using them here, uh, it should not be difficult at all to envision how this might work for a, uh, for item definitions themselves or for enemy definitions or for any other manner of things. Okay. I am done here. Uh, the code for all this is going to be on, on GitHub as usual. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. The lawnmower just went off outside again and it completely ruined my train of thought. I try to make one or two of these things a week. And that can be anything from uh, new new additions to GML and the 2.3 update to just general programming things to I especially like working with 3D things. I started a Patreon for these videos, so if you want to join the fun, links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you found that useful and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.